Well, hello, my friends. Kevin the Comic Doctor coming to you with another edition of What's in the Press. Uh, it's been a few days since I've been up here on YouTube, and I figured I better get up here soon. You guys are going to think I've disappeared, but I uh, had a pretty uh, pretty busy weekend and uh, a pretty busy couple of days. A lot of books still here, guys. Lots of books. And um, uh, yeah, listen, I have got a ton of books here to go through and show share with you today. Also, uh, stick around to the end of the video. I've got some pretty exciting news I'd like to share with you. I'm just going to fix this light really quickly. It's really bright. One sec. There we go. I think that's better. It was a little bit, uh, it felt like the heavens were shining down on me and that maybe some angels were going to come down and visit me here, but uh, a little too bright. Anyways, hey guys, how you doing? Glad you can make it today. Uh, again, I'm Kevin the Comic Doctor. I'm a comic book presser located up in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And like I said, you're watching What's in the Press, the show where I go over all the, a lot of the books I, I get get sent to me each and every week by by you guys, a lot of my uh, awesome clients. Um, listen, guys, I've got a ton to share with you, like I said. Let me get to it. First off, we can look at some of uh, Zach's books. And Zach comes to us from the big city of Toronto. And Zach has some modern books here. Let me share those with you. i go to the big screen here so you can see it a little bit uh, better. Here we go. So first off, we got a nice copy of X-Men 221. I'll move the mic down as well. There we are. We also see a copy of Wolverine number one, a book that I'm seeing here almost as frequently as I was seeing Amazing Spider-Man 361, which all of a sudden now I'm not seeing quite so often. Gee, I wonder why that is. Uh, a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 315. It's a newsstand edition. As well as a She-Hulk number one. The I guess the second series, also in a newsstand edition. Uh, Zach also submits a nice copy of Wolverine number 10. I love this cover with the Sabretooth and Logan. Classic cover. The sideways direct edition Spider-Man down there. Also, we have a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 293. Uh, part 2 of the Craven Saga. I have not been seeing this sent in too often anymore. I was seeing that for a while there. And uh, also a copy of Wolverine number 8. Is that the first appearance of Mr. Fix-It? I think that's his name, I believe. And a lovely copy. Oh, another copy. Whoops, here we go. Another copy of 315. This one's a direct edition versus the, uh, the newsstand. And a copy of 316 ASM. That's a direct edition as well. Thank you for your submission, Zach. Again, these babies we worked on over the next few days. Should be heading out to CGC probably late next week. Late next week. All right. Well, next we've got some cool books from, from Adam out of Ajax, Ontario. Uh, and Adam submits a copy of Submariner number one. Hot, hot book. Amazing Spider-Man 31. Thor number one. With the uh, Jane Foster uh, Thor. Avengers 196. I think some of these already... I already pressed a few of these, actually. Avengers 196. Doctor Strange 169. Wolverine number one. Oh, I think I must have spoke too soon, guys. <laughs> Amazing Spider-Man 361 in a newsstand. <laughs> and another Amazing Spider-Man 361. If you're gonna have one, you might as well have the newsstand. That's the rare of the rare copy, right? And then an Avengers number 37. And a Transformers number one. Some pretty awesome books here, Adam. And Amazing Spider-Man 252. Uh, featuring the first uh, symbiote uh, appearance in the Amazing Spider-Man title. Thank you for your submission, uh, Adam. Some awesome books there. Um, hey, guys, if you haven't done so already, if you haven't done so and, you, and you're just new here, guys, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, when I hit 1,500 subscribers, I'm going to be having another draw. That's right. When I hit milestone subscription levels, I'm going to have draws, and uh, I'm going to be sending out uh, a $250 gift certificate for my service to that winner. 
of that draw. And you know what? There'll probably be some more prizes too that I'll add to that as we get closer to that time. But as of right now, that's, what's, that's, that's what it is. Anyways, let's see what we have next. So next we have an order from Chris out of Toronto as well. Another Toronto order. And Chris submits... Uh, Am I in the right place here? Oh, no, I'm wrong. Chris is not yet. Mark is first. Then Chris. So Mark. Mark comes to us from Arlington, Texas. Excellent. Um, so Mark submits a small order of three books. And here they are. It's an amazing... Amazing Spider-Man. Boy, oh boy. I must be tired or what. A nice copy of Uncanny X-Men 129 featuring the first Kitty Pride. As well as Uncanny X-Men 130... The first appearance of Dazzler. This, I think, is going to be a, a book to pick up if you don't have one yet. And a nice copy of Uncanny X-Men 131. A nice small order. This one will get done as well. Uh, thank you so much for your patience, Mark. And we'll get this back to you probably again. Probably ship this one back to you sometime next week. All right? Thanks so much. Now, sorry about that. Chris from Toronto, you're next. And here we go. We have... Uh, an order uh, again it's a small order and chris submits a copy of uh, vengeance number one avenging Sp uh, spider-man number nine i love that cover and then this one here this vengeance number one again but it's a variant magneto cover in really nice condition now, I believe Chris told me the story on how he attained these books. If I remember correctly, Chris, if you're watching, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But essentially, Chris was uh, a, a lady lived on the same uh, floor as him in his apartment. And she was clearing out some stuff and she was throwing out a bag of comic books. And he says, well, what are you doing? Ah, I'm throwing these comic books away, she said. Well, you want them? She goes, sure, I'll take them. And he took them sight unseen. Didn't know what was inside of it. And a few of these babies are in there. So not bad to have neighbors like that. Thanks so much for your submission, Chris. Uh, again, these will be off the CGC late next week. Let's see what's going on over in the uh, chat window. I'll see who's here today. Oh, a lot of people over here. Let's see what's going on. I'll bring up the chat myself, as I often do. Here we go. And we got Luke's here. How you doing, Luke? Good to see you. It looks like your, cr your crunch time. You're returning to the winter semester. Correct. Yes. Yes, I am returning to the classroom in February. And it's going to be from February... Uh, to June, and I will probably be off again the following year. Um, that's my plan anyways. Um, but I have some news about that. We'll talk about that later in the episode. Wayne, what month are these comics from? We are now in uh, late, mid to late July. I'm moving into August soon. These are the smaller orders uh, that I, I talked about. So these are some smaller orders, Wayne. But that being said, my the bigger order that I'm going to show you in a moment, I think is also from, we're, in, we're into like mid-July, so we're getting there. And July, again, wasn't a crazy month. So the problem is, again, I'm working on some other bigger orders. I still got uh, that, uh, I got Angelo's books from April. I got one more uh, box of 25. I got to get done this week as well. Um, again, he submitted uh, 70, 150 books, and I've been doing them, you know, every other week I've been getting them done. Uh, and I got a couple other orders like that too. So that's the problem. I have these huge orders that I'm trying to get finished as well at the same time. Uh, Marty, how you doing, Marty? Are you getting all as caught up as you had hoped? Well, you know what? Um, no, no, I'm not. Um, I, I thought I'd be caught up by now, to be honest with you. And, um, I'm not, but again, stick around to the end of the video. I'm going to talk a bit about that. Uh, Hey, real Hyperion, how you doing? Uh, you taking a holiday break? No, no, I'm going to work through the holidays. I'll take Christmas off, obviously, and New Year's and all that stuff. Spend some time with the, with the family. But uh, I'll be working through the holidays as well. Um, hey, VP, how's it going? Hey, hey, Sam, how's it going? How are you? Stavros, how's it going, dude? Your comics are safe and sound, my friend. No worries. Sam, so Wolverine is the new 361. Might, <laughs> might very well be. Might very well be. Is it, It's the new measuring stick. Yeah, well, I think we're seeing which ones. And you know what? Uh, if you guys were watching the uh, YouTube trailers, uh, what, three or four days ago, the, the announcement of, um, of Spider-Man 2099, I'm going to sneeze. always comes in twos sometimes threes i did not want to sneeze into that microphone that would have blown your eardrums or blown your speakers um 
But yes, if you watch the uh, trailer for Spider uh, Into the Spider Verse Two, we now know that uh, the new uh, Spider Man Two Thousand Ninety Nine is is hot. And right away, I went on eBay right away and I bought two copies of three sixty five. I got them cheap. I almost got a couple of copies of number one as well in nine eight, but they the guy canceled the order. Mm, didn't like that too much. I got him for like two hundred bucks and he canceled them. But yeah, so you know what, guys, we all know that's going to happen. So now the three sixty fives are going to be. Co- I'm going to see them all the time here. I'm sure, and the uh, and the and the Spider Man two thousand ninety nine number ones are going to come through a lot. I've been seeing pictures all over Instagram and all over the the Facebook comic groups. It's the way it is, guys. It's the way it is. But yeah, Wolverine number one is a pretty good. Uh, is similar to the three sixty one. I'm seeing that a lot now. Rob Delaney, how are you, sir? Stavro says, I have a 361 also, but did not send it in. <laughs> we can wait, I guess. Hey, Jim, how are you? Uh, Rob Bin, yay, comic doctor in the house. Yes, yes, finally back. How was the sale? You make bank. The sale was really, really good. I had a lot of guys come in on Saturday, and it was a good day. Yeah, I did very well. Um, I still have a lot of books there, by the way, guys. I'm going to be there at the shop this, this, this weekend on Saturday from 11 till 1. I'm um, dropping off some books to some clients and I'll be there. So if you want to, if you're able to come, still lots of great books in that $5 bin uh, and the $10 and $20 bin. So come on by if you have a chance. David Ross, good evening to all. Hello, David. Saw your Instagram spine roll repair, inc- repair, incredible work. Well, thank you. And I've got another Captain Marvel spine roll I'm going to up- upload soon as well. Thank you. I love doing spine roll re- repairs. It's a lot of fun. Jim, uh, those look high grade already. Yeah, some of these books I've shown you already may not need work. I haven't taken them out of the sleeve yet, but once I do, if I don't see anything wrong with the books, they don't get pressed. I, they, they go right to CGC. That being said, <laughs> I'd say nine times out of ten, they need some, there's something on there that needs to be fixed. Because in a modern book, it could be even the most slightest of defect that will cause uh, a nine eight to drop to a nine six or a nine four. So you got to be very careful with the moderns. Uh, Wayne, let's find out where Chris lives. <laughs> yeah, really. Let's go. Let's move in. Uh, Frank. Hey, Frank. Hoops, big score with a free copy of Vengeance. I know, I know, I know. Uh, Wayne. Oh, mine are coming up. I need to get those others to you. Yeah, you're coming up soon, I hope. We need to clone you. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it's already been done. I'm sure we've been, I, you know, I'm sure there's a clone of me out there somewhere. Uh, 150 books. Not fair. Tell me about it, Thomas. Not fair. And I try to discourage it. <laughs> I try to discourage it when when guys want to submit like 100 books or 200 books. I'm like, er, maybe just you know, uh, Paolo, for example, who watches the show, he always drops off a lot of books. But you know what? As long as people are patient and they and they let me break it up over the course of a, of a few months, then it's not so bad. Uh, you know, if I were to say, okay, I got 150 books and it's going to take me a month and a half to do those books. Um, that's not good because everybody else is waiting. Right. So I got to break those orders up. And so long as the people that submit or under, understand that they were good. But that being said, guys, even though my wait times have been crazy and I'm, I'm not as ahead as I, I hope to be at this point, I'm still saying that pressing, cleaning, CGC, the whole work is still around six to nine months. It's still in that window, you know? It's a long time, don't get me wrong, but that's that's the way that's the reality of it. But again, stick around at the end of the video. I've got some news I want to share with you today. Um, Mike says, uh, good to hear, mid-July, uh, I think I have early AUG submissions. Exactly. <laughs> Wayne says, bless you, Stav. Yeah, heart attack, avoided. Yeah, Stav was kind of worried. He had a, he sent some books to me from, from Quebec, and... Um, he had asked for signature, but Canada Post just left it on the doorstep. They didn't ask, you know, they didn't ring the doorbell or anything. They, they probably knocked. Anyways, anyhow, the books are fine. Uh, what, what they usually do, Canada Post, they'll knock on the door. And when someone opens the door and waves, they just leave. That's probably what happened, Stav. I was not here to receive it, but my daughter was. So everything was good. Um, Wayne says, I sold my 365 and 2099 plus four others for 60 bucks. Ooh. Potshan, hey, buddy. A Spider-Man 2099, number one second printer, pretty popular. The white cover, those are pretty popular too. I'm seeing those. Uh, Wayne says, shush, I was planning to come to do my drop-off this Saturday. You can still come. It wasn't crazy busy. We had about probably, again, my, my office is very small, so I can't put like 20 guys in there. I think at, every, at one point we had seven or eight guys in there, and that was fine. It was Everyone had their masks on. Everyone was doing their thing, and it was fine. Rob Collects, hey, Doc, what's the most valuable comic you have worked on? Uh... Probably a Tales of Suspense 39 and an, and an 8.5, which I think came in at around when I was working on it, 
was valued at around, I think, 40000 Yeah. I think that must be it. And that wasn't too long ago either. That wasn't too long ago. Uh, Wayne, I have the mother of spine rules for you to fix coming in. Good. I like it. I like doing them. You have any CGCs coming back right now? No, I don't. And I thought I did. And I have pages of, of orders. There's books that are done, but they're just sitting there. Remember guys, they only send books back when I have 25 books ready. They don't ship books back unless I have 25 books ready to go. So I don't know. What's, I think I have close to that, but they're not going to ship until that time. So I'm just waiting, but I got a feeling that it's going to all just come back at once. And it's going to be crazy. Um, I really wish they'd hurry up because I have a lot of partially filled orders. That's the problem, right? If guys give me economies and moderns, they mix it all up. Sometimes the, you know, the express books are going to come back quicker, obviously in the standard books, but the economies take forever. The moderns come at another time. So if I've got a guy with four different tiers, their books are not all going to come back at once. And I'm holding on to those books for a long time. And those, and that, that takes up real estate, which I really hate, but that's the nature of the business. I am afraid. Uh, Rob says Miles in 2099 also went through the, th- through where Spider-Man in India is from, so I'm hoping on that one as you have my copy. Wait, wait, okay, so Miles in 2000 also went through the through where Spider-Man India is from, so I'm hoping on that one as you have my copy waiting. Well, I'll get to it very soon, Rob. Jim, are you accepting books with less than ten thousand? No, oh, well, less than ten thousand, less than one thousand. Not just yet, Jim, but soon. Probably in January. In January, I'll, I'll, I'll open the floodgates again in January. Okay, well, let's get back to the books. I'm sure you want to see. I've got a couple more orders to share with you here. So let's get out of that tra- chat area. And let's have a look at some of Colin's books. And Colin comes to us from Pickering, which is only about 30 minutes that way uh, from, from Oshawa. And he has some nice, well, here's one for you. This is one everyone's been waiting for. A nice direct copy of Amazing Spider-Man 361. Another one, right? But Colin makes up with that for that with some some sweet older uh, ASM books. We all love our old ASM books. A nice copy of number six, the first appearance of the lizard. Uh, of course, we love this one here because lots of speculation on Craven the Hunter, uh, number 15. It's a nice copy too, actually. It's a nice, nice mid-grade copy of the first appearance of Craven the Hunter and Amazing Spider-Man number 15. And then we also have a copy of Amazing Spider-Man 129, first appearance of the Punisher. We see this one quite a bit too, actually. And this one's odd. It looks like someone tried to erase something on here already. Yeah, this one, you see, that's, 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 that's frustrating. Check this out, guys. Look under, you see the, you see right here uh, in between his legs, that all those white streaks. Those are someone's attempt to clean off fingerprints. Because there's a lot of fingerprints, black fingerprints. And that is a very common problem on yellow covered books. For some reason, the finger, the dirty fingers just imprinted on that. So whoever, someone tried to use an eraser to get rid of it. I'm going to try to make it look less uh, blotchy. But the, the yellow is gone, unfortunately, in some areas. So unfortunately, uh, it's going to be a, a lighter shade of yellow in there. But I can probably, and, and honestly... Oftentimes, you can get rid of fingerprint smudges on yellow books like this. Um, so it's a shame they went and used an eraser. They should have used a chem sponge very gently, and they probably would have got it off. All right, Colin, thanks again for this awesome submission. A small submission, but an awesome one nonetheless. And the books will be heading up to CGC, like I said, probably late next week. Uh, another big order. I just had a huge order to CGC uh, yesterday, and another one's going out again. Like I said, this will be a late next week. All right, so we did Colin's. Let me then look at, I think, one more here. Is it one more? Alessandro out of, <clears throat> I think he's out of Mississauga or, or the Toronto area. There's no actual city, but I recognize the area code. So he's either local or I think he's out of the Toronto area, Mississauga, Oakville. Anyways, let's have a look and see what Alessandro has. Um, uh, here we go. We have a Miss Marvel number one. <clears throat> like I said, another one, Wolverine, number one. Uh, Captain America, 354. 
Tomb of Dracula, number one. Iron Man, 118. That's the first uh, James Rhodes, I believe. Eternals, number one. We got a Spawn, number one. She-Hulk, number one. Another 221. This is a pretty popular book. I'm seeing this quite a bit as well. Mr. Sinister. Working on this book two or three times a week at least. A nice copy of Thundercats, number one. And uh, Marvel Comics presents uh, Weapon X number 72. A nice copy of X-Men 141. Amazing Spider-Man 300. That's a nice, decent copy of that. And Invincible Iron Man number 9. And finally, last but not least, Alias number one. Thank you for your submission, Alessandro. And again, these books will be heading off very, very soon to CGC down in Sarasota. Great, great uh, collection of books you have there. Um, so guys, I was talking a little bit about uh, sticking around at the end of the video. I'm going to talk about it right now. So yes, yes, I'm overwhelmed. That's my story, guys. I, I tried taking uh, this semester off to catch up. And uh, the books just keep com kept coming in, kept coming in, kept coming in. And uh, it looks like uh, what I'm going to do uh, starting in the new year is I have a fellow that has been working with me for several years. Um, his name's Charlo. He's a local fellow. He lives just in Whitby here close by. And, and Charlo uh, <clears throat> worked with me a long time ago. Uh, I trained him on how to clean, clean comics. And in the meantime, he's been training himself on how to press comic books. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to, I need some help. So I'm bringing him in. I'm bringing him in. That's it. I, I give up. I can't do it by myself. I just can't. So starting in January, uh, Charlo's going to come in. He's going to train with me uh, for a full month. We're going to train every single day and we're going to, you know, I'm going to see what he's doing and how his technique is. His cleaning technique is fantastic. He cleans books perfectly. Uh, I just don't know how, what he's doing when it comes to pressing. So I'm going to watch him carefully and share my techniques with him and get him up to snuff. And he's going to be working on books full time. Uh, that will hopefully help me bring the, um, the number of books down. Now, that being said, will Charlo be working on, you know, $5,000 books and we'll be working on, on high end books. No, <laughs> no, he will not. Uh, books of certain value will only ever be worked on by me. I'll still work on a lot of books too, obviously, uh, especially when I catch back up. And the beautiful thing about this is then I can, we can maybe get the turnaround time knocked down a little bit because I, I just can't, without shutting down completely, like me saying nothing, no more books for three months, I won't be able to catch up. I just, I just can't. And that's just the reality of it all. So I am going to see how this works. I tried this before. I'll be honest, I tried this about, oh, about three years ago I tried doing this. Mm. Three or four years ago I tried doing it. I brought someone in. I think I explained this to people before. I brought someone in to help me and it just didn't work out. Charla was one of the people I brought at that time actually, but he had a full-time job as well. And so he, he couldn't really dedicate the time. And the other person I brought in was full-time, but that didn't just it didn't work out. The work, the, the work wasn't getting done to my to my level of quality. So I let, let them go. And then I just, I, I, I turned the office into basically a pickup drop off location with some books for sale. I, I took the presses out. So the presses are going back. The presses are going back to the shop. In fact, I may even be renting a bigger space. I'm looking at a bigger space right now in the same, in the same building on the same floor, but there's an office that came available. It's quite spacious and, uh, would be nice to have a lot of natural light so i'm looking at that right now i may stay where i am but i am looking across the hall as well so little things like that pretty exciting things to hopefully to you know to, to, to get things moving a little quicker i i don't i'm going to be inspecting every single book guys uh for the first three or four months for sure until i'm really satisfied that the quality is there i'll be looking at every single book every single book and it's going to take some time there's always going to be a learning curve there but that's what 
The news is, I think I, I that's the way it has to go. If the business continues to grow, I have had so many people offer to, oh, I want to work, I want to, I want to work with you and clean books and, and do that kind of stuff. You know, I'm never going to tell, tell somebody to leave their job and come do this because I can't guarantee uh, that kind of an income and that kind of a lifestyle. I don't, I would never ask someone to do that. But if this goes well with, with Charlo, um, I'm always happy to consider bringing others in and expanding it. Uh, I think if I can get the turnaround time to a, to a, uh, you know, to like a month or two, I think I can really, cause I know a lot of guys don't want to do CGC anymore. I know that I, I see it all around me. People are, do not want to send books to CGC. Um, other pressers, if they're good, they, they, they're just like me. They're busy. They're, they're behind two, three months, the same, same deal. So I'm trying to proactively figure out a way to hammer out this problem and uh, move forward. Uh, and hopefully this will work, right? Um, anyways, let's go back to the chat and see what you guys think. Let's go back to the chat and see what you guys are saying. Uh, Stav, just just licked up an ASM6? That sounds kinky. I'm just joking. I know you said you just picked up an ASM6. That's awesome. Uh, Potashin, what happens at CGC with a book that has a signature on the inside first page? Uh, if they catch it, uh, they will, they'll, they'll make notice. Sometimes they'll say signature on front, on front page. You know, if it's a clear, like if it's a Stan Lee, they might say Stan Lee written on first page. They may say something like that. Uh, Davey Clare, have you noticed manufactured defects on back of Ghost Rider volume, excuse me, volume three, number 50 newsstand? All 50 copies I bought new have the same crease on the back cover. No, I haven't because I haven't seen the book come in. But that being said, I see manufacturing errors on a lot of books. Like, for example, Amazing Spider-Man 252, a lot of them have a little a little half circle crease on the top left of the back cover. I see that on probably 90% of them. So, yeah, when, when you get a run of books... You know, if, if there's a problem in that run, you're going to see that error on several copies. In some cases, hundreds of copies. So, yeah, I believe that. Stav, erase your marks. Uh, yeah, that was on the ASM 129, those erase your marks. Jim Bruce, what if I, my book is worth 2000 in mint, but in the condition it isn't worth 400 like a 6 ASM 39? Yeah, I, I, I'm just trying to, Jim, what I'm trying to do is just slow things down. I don't want to take your book from you and make you wait five months. That, that's the thing. I want to catch up so that when your book comes in, it's not in here. And you can ask some of the guys who've been waiting for a long time. It's not fun. You know, one book I can usually get off, you know, do pretty quickly, Jim. Um, but right now I'm just, just holding off till, if you wouldn't mind waiting till mid January uh, or towards the end of January, that'd be great. We'll get that book in here and, and away you go. I don't want to charge you. I don't want to charge you a uh, hundred dollars to press that book. Okay. So let's keep it a $25 press. It's a lot, a lot more reasonable, I think. Um, and let's hope it becomes a $2,000 book. That'd be fantastic. I'd love to help you get there. Stavros, my SM16 sent to you has a fingerprint white cover. It should come off. Brouhaha. How is it going? Good to see you. ASM10 Spider Punk. Okay. Charlo, even closer to me. Love it. Uh, <laughs> Thomas Grant, have you worked on the She-Hulk and Moon Knight books from your contest yet? Yes, they're there. They're at CGC right now. Um, as well as the book that I gave out at Robert Meyer Burnett's show, I sent in the Hawkeye number one as well. I also fast-tracked, modern fast-track. So hopefully we'll get the results on those back sooner rather than later. I have not forgotten. Uh, I probably should have just sent those damn things in two months ago. Are you ready for it? But I liked having the books here to show them off. And if they were there, I couldn't do that. I, I don't know. Anyways. But yeah, they're there. They're there. Uh, I don't, but I'll tell you, Thomas, the, the She-Hulk is not a very high grade. I thought it was going to be a mid-grade book. It's not a very high grade book. And I tried to replace it. I tried to, and if I find another copy locally, uh, you know, in a better grade, because I know what grade it's going to, it's not going to come back a very high grade. Uh, if I find a book locally at a decent, I'll just buy it. And whoever won that She-Hulk book, that's the book they're going to get. Um, if it, if it doesn't come back before then, that is, uh, give me his con. No, I'm not giving his contact info. Are you crazy? He's already signed an, a non-disclosure. He's signed a, he, there's no competition. He's working for me. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hiring him to do other people's work. I want to get the, get, get, help me with my work. Uh, 
Newfoundland 424. I guess I have to wait another episode to see my books. Haha. Uh, what's your name again? NDFND. What's your name? Uh, congrats. I love it. Good. Sam, uh, this new guy can work on my Spideys, including your favorite ASM 130. Perhaps. I wish I had capital. I would start grading company to rival CGC Wayne, man. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I don't know if it's a good idea or not. Uh, Rob Bin, I'm guessing comic doc gig is more lucrative than teacher gig. Uh, Rob, probably around the same right now. Probably around the same. Uh, you know, it's just, you know, I've been doing it for 25 years teaching, the teaching gig. This is something I've done for two or three years. So it's a little more newer, a little more fun, you know, for me at this time. Um, but teaching also has its benefits too, right? There's the pension and there's the uh, the benefits and all that jazz. But I'm, I'm close. I'm near the end. I'm like five years out. So, you know, it's kind of that, you know, what do I do type thing. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw in the towel. And I love teaching still. I love, to, if I'm teaching the classes I love to teach, then I like being there. And uh, it's a lot of fun. But yeah, right now it's about, it's about on par, I would say. I'm not, I, I'm not, uh, I don't find it's been the, the, the fluct, there's not been much fluctuation in our lifestyle since I've done this. Um. Uh, Sam, was the, was that water? Did your daughter get you to drink? I know. Yes, she did. Yep. Yep. And my physiotherapist yelled at me today as well and said, stop drinking that shit, that diet Coke. And, and so I'm trying to, I'm trying. It's not easy, man. It's not freaking easy. Cause I, 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 I love my sweet drinks and, and my pop is my thing. It's my, you know, my downfall, the thing I'm the most weakest about, you know, chocolate and pop. I, I, I love it. But I got to cut it out because it's no good for me. And it's, it, I'm, I'm noticing it's not good for you. It's not good for you. So I'm trying to behave myself. So yes, sure. She yelled at me and I'm listening. I'm trying to listen. Um, uh, Marty says, that's a great idea. As long as you oversee, as you say, you do the high ends. Exactly, Marty. That's the way. I'm not going to be giving him an ASM number one to work on, obviously. Um, my, my goal is to get him to the point where he is good enough to do those types of things. And provide him the work to do that. And it'd be great if I get a couple of guys doing that. If I could, I mean, I, think I, I could love to scale this business to the point where I'm doing more of this. I'd love to be, I love the YouTube stuff. I love, uh, I love the, I love this, the, 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 the marketing side of it, of the business. Um, the cleaning and pressing is great, but it's tedious, right? It, 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 if anybody's pressed books, you know what I mean? Imagine doing hundreds and hundreds of them. It's a lot of work. Um, so to have that help, I, I hope will work. And that's if he likes it. He might come in and not, he might hate doing it. If that's the case, I'm back to square one again. But he has been cleaning and he has been pressing his own books. I, I told him that years ago. Um, I said to him, listen, I go, you have the cleaning under, under control. You need to get the, um, you need to work on the, uh, the pressing. So uh, I had an old press I gave him. Um, and I gave him an old t-shirt press as a cold press. And I said, practice, you've got years, just use your own books, practice on your own books. And he has, and, um, you know, he calls me once in a while with questions. Oh, how do you do this? How do you figure that out? And we, we chat, but now I'll be working side by side and I can really, uh, really show him how to do that with. So, so hopefully that'll work out. Um, <laughs> uh, finish Dr. Roo. Uh, oh wait, Nathan, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm skipping right over. Uh, Stavros, I'd love to learn. And you know what, guys? People say that to me all the time. You should learn. Why not? Pick up a small press. And there's tons of help pages out there uh, on, on YouTube and on Facebook. And there's like I think there's actually a book you can buy on Amazon on how to press books. Go ahead and learn. I mean, <clears throat> most a lot of the guys I, I work with, they don't want to do it. They, they don't, they don't want to do it. They have no interest in pressing and cleaning books. They just want the damn work done. But some people like to do that, like to tinker or whatever. If you're a tinker, like to tinker and fiddle with stuff, then this might be something that's a fun little hobby. Yeah, by all means, you should try it. Why not? Uh, uh, and Thomas says, why aren't people sending to CGC? I think it's a turnaround times. Uh, it's the headache. I know one dealer, I'm not going to mention any names. There's a dealer in the city that uh, had a bit of a run-in with a client. The, the book, The books were delivered at CGC. They were destroyed. Well, they were damaged badly. And that left a really bad taste in that person's mouth. It wasn't his fault. He packed the books properly, but the, the, when they got the CGC, they were destroyed. He thinks, well, I'm not going to say what he thinks. Anyways, the books were, I'll just say the books were damaged at CGC. And it became a real hassle. And he didn't want to deal with it anymore. He goes, oh, I, I just want to back off the CGC stuff. 
Um, for me, I stopped doing it for about four or five months too. I know guys like Luke might remember because I, I stopped doing CGC for a while because it, it was, it's a pain in the ass. It's a pain in the ass. It really honestly is. Um, especially being up here in Canada, it's a bit of a pain. You got the customs to deal with. You got the brokerage fees you got to deal with. You got the insurance you got to deal with. It's expensive, right? And it's time consuming. You know, if, if I got a, uh, like a, a, a fellow um, who watches the show, how you doing? Uh, Brad gave me an order the other day. It was uh, 50 books. And it, t- it takes time to input all that information into the CGC uh Uh, online submission service. It takes time. Now, they have a new service they're launching in a few days. I'm very excited. Hopefully, it's better than the one they have, but it takes time. So, I I had enough of it. I said, I'm done with it. But honestly, 99% of the people who have me pressing clean books want their books graded. So, what am I going to say? No. And I know other places around here in Southern Ontario, I don't, again, I'm not mentioning any names here, okay? Uh, Their communication is terrible. They don't communicate. People call, no answer. And, and, and I'm not like that. If you know, if you dealt with me, you know, if you contact me, you're going to get a response. May not, not be the very, very, in, the, in an hour, but you're going to get a response within a day. Usually within 24 hours, I respond. So, and usually it's even faster than that. If you text me, I usually text you back pretty darn quickly. Um, people just don't want to deal with the CGC thing. It's a pain in the ass. And, and those that do it, some of them don't do it very well. They're just, they're really slow. The paperwork is chintzy. Uh, the communication with the clients is not good. You feel like when the book is gone, it's gone. You don't. You have no connection to your book anymore. It, it's 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 you're like a number. It's scary. Um, I try to run my my service very different than that. I don't want people to feel like their books are being held ransom. I don't want people to feel like the books are in limbo. You know, I could tell people where their books at all times. I always say to people, if the wait's too long, it's driving you crazy. Give me your, I'll mail your books back to you. I'll mail your books right back to you. I had a guy send me books from Nova Scotia uh, about four months ago. And the books sat for about a month. And he goes, are they ready yet? I said, are ready yet? I haven't even looked at your books yet. Oh, I thought they were going to get done. And I said, buddy, man, I got like a three month turner. I got, uh, no. And, and he goes, oh, my books back. I said, no problem. I packed them up. I shipped them back. No problem. No problem. I don't hold anyone's books hostage. Now, once they're at CGC, there's nothing I can do. I can't get the books back until they're done. So, but once they're with, with while they're with me, yeah, no problem. Anyways, um, oh boy, let's see. Oh, okay. Um, let's check the sunshine list. <laughs> You could. I'm over now. I think I'm over it, to be honest with you. A Finnish Dr. Wu says, I figure since the books I gave you are mainly for my personal collection, waiting is no big deal. And that's just it, right? And most people, I'd say majority of my clients could give a rat's behind how long it takes. As long as it's done right and they're safe and they're tracked and everything's good, like Peter just said, they're happy. But some guys, they want to sell their books. They want their books back as quickly as possible because they want to sell, they want to flip them. And I get that. You know, guys, uh, you know, you have a, they just announced the Spider-Man 2099 and, you know, all of a sudden CGC is going to be inundated with those books and boy, you better get those books back before that movie drops because what happens? Look at this car- all these Carnage books now. Are Carnage books flying off the shelves? No, they're not. They're not. Because the hype surrounding carnage is now gone the book is still popular don't get me wrong it's still considered a key book but is all that all that um attention on the book anymore no it's not so i understand why dealers want their books back quickly i get it but you know I, i'm not only dealing with de- i'm dealing with dealers and collectors so i gotta juggle that uh my name is daryl daryl when did your books come in daryl uh wayne ontario teachers pension plan richest in the world yeah it's a good pension plan It's a very, very good pension plan. No, they used to own, they sold the Leafs. They sold the Leafs. They sold sold the Leafs about five or six years ago, I think. Thomas, what grade will the Moon Knight come back? I think the Moon Knight's going to come back in 9-6. I think the Moon Knight's going to come back in 9-6. And to be honest, it it could come back. If if they keep grading the way they're grading, which is very easy lately, it goes hard, easy, hard, easy, you might get a 9-8 out of it. The She-Hulk, not so much. The She-Hulk is, was low. It's probably going to come back like a four or five. Um, it's still a hundred, $150 book in that grade, but I'd like to find a little nicer one if I can. So we'll see. Jim Bruce. Yep, started grading your own CGC. Don't matter. 
Okay, let's uh, just try that again. Yep. Start grading your own CGC. Don't matter. Buy cases. Make a nice label. Give a fair grade. Screw CGC. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, you know, Jim, I thought about that. There was a time actually when I was in co- I was talking with Halo Comic Grading Company. I don't know if you heard of Halo or not. If you haven't heard of Halo, look them up. H A L O. And Halo uh, is a is a grading company that resides in. Australia and you know he the, the fellow that runs it found a niche he goes you know what we're in the middle of nowhere here and we, we it's impossible for us to send our books to Sarasota it's just way too expensive so he decided to take matters in his own hand and so Australia has their own grading company called Halo well, I, I was speaking with Halo the owner there I forget his name now it's, it's been several years since I spoke with him uh, there was a time when I thought the way you did Jim I thought you know what we need something up here in Canada so Canadian clients don't have to ship their books over the border, and so our, our our shipping costs can be reduced and whatever. And so I started talking to him, and he was really into it. He loved the idea of bringing Halo to England, like to Europe, Australia, and Canada. But the problem I I had was again, it's it's who's gonna buy it? Who's gonna buy it? You know, you 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 got to buy all these slabs, you got to do all the manufacturing, you got to do all the all the work to um. It's a very labor-intensive process. Not only do you have graders, we got guys who accept the books. And by the way, what I'm about to say, I do that now with the pressing and cleaning. But now I'm thinking one step more. My gosh, you receive the books, you uh, you you um, put them in the system, then you grade, you clean the books, you press the books, you pack the books, you send them for grading at CGC. If I wasn't doing that, I'd have to take the books, put them in 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 a and I guess position to be graded, so that a grader has to grade them. Maybe three graders. I would think three graders at least. And then you'd have to put an inner, you know, put the inner well, seal it, put it inside the slab, seal that, have the labels all printed out. Oh my lord, it's labor intensive. I don't even know how CGC makes money. And sometimes I really don't. The, like on the on the on the lower value books, I don't know how the hell they make even any money doing that. I don't. So I don't. I don't think that honestly, grading is like it's it's a it's a it's it was kind of a pipe dream of mine for a while. It'd be kind of cool, but the same, I don't, no one's done it because I don't think the Canadian market's big enough, and I don't think in the end people want CGC because when they go to when they go to sell the books, they want top dollar. If a book's in a PGX slab, if the book's in a Halo slab, if the book's in a even a CBCS slab, it's not getting as much as CGC. So you're always going to contend with that. I think that maybe Canadian collectors would go for it because it does protect the books and it's got a sort of a grade in there for insurance purposes. It'd probably be just fine. But I think the diehard collectors are still going to want CGC and the Americans will not want it at all. And that's where the market is, right? Um, Fiendish Dr. Wu, haven't drank soda in over seven years. I miss Dr. Pepper so much. Oh my God, seven years. Good for you though, man. Good for you. Yeah, I wish I could say the same. No, no. Uh, Wayne, I started in intermittent fasting, 16 to 8. Look it up. You will feel better in days. Then the weight will drop too. Yeah, I was doing a little bit of that. Um, I should look that up again. We'll talk about that on Saturday, hopefully. Um, Rob Bin, how did you learn to press? Uh, I've always been a very inquisitive person. <laughs> I teach myself to do a lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, if you read my bio on my website, I talk about doing antiques. Well, I, uh, you know... I remember buying an old phonograph, you know, a wind-up phonograph when I was like uh, 17. I went to a yard sale. I bought some old Bing Crosby albums. They were 78s, and I had no way to play them. And so I went to an antique store, and he had an old phonograph, and I, I bought it. And it looked like it was terrible. It was all, it was all the wood was rotting off, and all the veneers were peeling. And I taught myself how to refinish it. So I stripped it all down, and I put new veneer on it, and I stained it and sealed it, and it looked looks fantastic. I, still have it somewhere in the garage i think but uh and then i started then i started restoring um all kinds of furniture and i opened a small you know when i was in university i was restoring furniture wood furniture i was doing antiques tables chairs you know like i said phonographs anything i just learned how to do stuff same thing when it comes to like you know uh i was never afraid to do nothing like my old house i renovated the house i did the bathroom and i did the kitchen i restored everything i do it all I was always just very handy at that. I'm just a very, I'm a tinkering kind of guy. I like to tinker. I got that from my father. My father was a great, you know, he'd build stuff and he did nothing scared me. He'd just build a house, no problem, just build it. So I kind of inherited that. And so um, when I got back into comic collecting ooh, about 13 years ago, I always heard about pressing, but never really was much into it. And I, I, I you know, it wasn't very 
people people hated pressers back when I got into it. I was getting hate mail. People were writing me saying, "You're you asshole! Don't be! You shouldn't be touching these comic books. You're ruining. You're, you're restoring the books, and you're you know." I was getting all kinds of stuff like that. <laughs> I really was. It was nuts. But nonetheless, I taught myself how to do it because I like to see the book look better. Like like the antiques. I want to see antique before and after. I love to see what it looked like and what it could what it could look like. Right. Or what it can look like. And so I started doing the same thing with comics. And back then there was no there was no YouTube how-to videos. There was no nothing. And so I just pretty much put two and two together. I had a friend also that went to went to art restoration school at a college here called Sir Sanford Fleming. And so uh, I contacted him. And he put me in touch with a couple of people that worked on paper in, 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 in particular. And so we, I asked a lot of questions and they gave me some suggestions and I just taught myself. And then over time, you know, your, your methodology changes. My methods now are very different than they were five years ago, three years ago. I started doing things different even just this year. I started trying something else. And I have another idea I want to try as well. Um, it's, it's, it's like I tell people, read everything you can read online and, and, and buy the equipment and start playing with it. But then, you know what? You will devise your own techniques. You know, there's other guys doing this and we all have slightly different ways of doing things. Things that work for me might not work for somebody else, you know. Uh, but the, the key is the tools. Though. You want to buy a good press. Don't, don't, I'm, I keep saying this over and over again. You don't want to be uh, hammering it out on those Chinese uh, shirt presses. They're, they're, I don't know. I, I don't like them. Personally, I don't like them. They're good for cold pressing when you're done in the, in the, in, in the real, the dry mount press. You can put it over to a cold press. That's, as, that's, as, that's all I would do. But um, anyways, yeah, experiment. Uh, Stav, have you ever thought of doing consignments from clients who you press books for on IG? Oh, I mean, selling books for people? Yeah, I can do that. I've got something coming up. I'll talk about that as well, and that might be of interest to you. Comics with Bonix. Uh, I'm new. To, I'm a new sub. Hey, thanks, man, for subbing. Appreciate it. I'm enjoying your pressing videos and top books in your collection. Cheers. Well, thank you, Comics with Bonix. Thanks for joining in and and uh, and hopefully subscribed. Uh, great. Thank you. Uh, Rob Delaney. I would love to learn to press, but I don't have the time for it, so that's why guys like you are a godsend. And that's just it. It does take time. It does take time. Uh, Stavros, shit happens. Stavros, CGC now doing cards. Yeah, they're doing cards now too. In fact, I got to send some cards for a guy very soon. Wayne, people want their books graded for the sale, not the preservation. A raw sells for 25, same book graded 98, of course, worth 300. That's the way it is. Because there's no surprises, right? It's like buying a certified car. You buy a car as is, you never know what you're going to get. You take it to the mechanic. Oh, the tranny's gone, or or the engine had a quick fix done on it, or whatever, right? Oh, it was, it was an accident. You don't know. <clears throat> when you buy a car certified, you're guaranteed there's no baloney. You're guaranteed the car is safe. It's been looked over by the mechanics. It has the proper you know inspection package done, and you feel better. CGC is just that, especially when you're talking about high end, high end books like big dollar books. Okay, that's very important. Um, uh, Stav, you didn't operation manager. I am the operation manager. I'm the operations manager. I am the marketer. I am the accountant. I'm the, uh, well, I actually, actually just hired a new accountant, but I was the accountant. I'm still the bookkeeper, kind of. Uh, I'm the presser, the cleaner, the CGC person, the rep. The every, I do everything. I, I, the, the shipper, the packing guy. I pack all the books up. I ship the books. I'm the FedEx. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Um. Fiendish says, Wayne, <clears throat> I had my book sent for preservation. <laughs> That's right. Stav, Kevin, if you come across a low-grade AF-15, let me know. Yeah, good luck, man. And even a low-grade one, you're looking at 15 grand. Uh, oh, uh, Daryl says, late July, and I dropped off 12 more a month or so ago that you were adding to the 12. Now, that means then, uh, Daryl, you're any day now. You're any day now. It should be, it should be the next couple of weeks. Uh, Stav, Australia Company. That's right. Oh, I got to sneeze again, guys. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, Australia Company, hard, hard, br hard to brand Halo. It was, it was hard. Um, there's some things that he does that I, about his slabs. That I, I'm not crazy about either. But you know what? When you're buying into a company like that, who are you to say, "Oh, I'll change this or change that"? It's his company. He can do whatever the hell he wants. Um, Anyways, I, I just don't think, I thought, honestly, I'm going to sneeze again. To me, I thought about doing something where you take a book like this. Hold on.
Woo! And I'm a loud sneezer too. You guys are lucky you didn't hear that. I always thought about doing something where you take a book like this and you basically put it in a really nice mylar, you know, triple boarded, nice and thick, or maybe even that clear acrylic backing, the, the, the one you can get now, the, the 50 point acrylic backing, we can see right through it, and then putting like a, um, like a hologram do not tamper sticker on it and then putting a grade on it and, and doing something like that because that would not be too labor intensive. And what's nice about that too is you can see the book both front and back and there's a grade on it. So for insurance purposes, it's done. And, you know, as long as you got a tamper-proof seal on it, the person you're selling it to knows the book has not been fudged. Now, is it a hard plastic uh, case? No. So damage, I guess, could still happen to the comic. But I thought about doing that as well. But that's something maybe one day down the road. I don't think I really want to get into grading as well. It's like I don't want to get into restoration work either. It's just can of worms, guys. Can of worms. Um, hey, everyone. Prince Zodiac's here, guys. What's up, Doc? What I missed? Just kidding. Oh, watch replay. Good idea. Let's start from the very beginning. No, no, no. Um, uh, Rob, CGC ha has the market and it would be hard to compete with that. And that's the problem, man. They, they are the Coca-Cola. CGC is the Coca-Cola. Everybody else is a secondary company. CGC, you know, uh, you got RC Cola is like PGX and Pepsi Cola is CBCS. Uh, did I miss anything, Colin? Hey, Craig, actually, you missed, uh, I don't know if you saw it, it was a 1.8 giant size X-Men 1 for sale on Marketplace. Check it out. Stavros, you're like Doc from Back to the Future. <laughs> oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> I need big white hair. Um, Pappy, I missed all. What month of submission was this video? Uh, we are in, uh, I got some July books here, mostly July books. Um... White Tiger Cool Calm Collected. Kawabunga fam. How's it going, White Tiger Cool Calm Collected? Thanks for dropping by. Hope you're subscribed. If not, please do so. Marty, I refinished furniture for years and really want to get back into it. There's something about seeing things being reborn. And that's why I love doing this with the comic books too. You're giving them a new lease on life. They look fantastic. You you know, that that's exactly it, Marty. You know, when I took that old phonograph, I remember it was covered and just, it was just the finish was all rippled and... You know, damage from being in a barn for God knows how long. And I put that chemical stripper on it. And this, that first layer of chemical stripper, uh, I left it sit for, you know, you, if you know this, if you've done refinishing, it bubbled a little bit that I took my scraper and I scraped off the old finish and you can see the old mahogany, red mahogany wood shining through. And it was like, what? And you strip that whole thing down and it looks beautiful. So, I mean, I get it. Taking something, I'm into cars too, man. I love, I love old cars and refinishing old cars too. It's very expensive to do. But I love seeing something something that's like crap and then made to look beautiful again. There's a guy actually on YouTube. If you guys like, uh, 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 what do you call it? Like dinky cars or matchbook cars. There's a guy on YouTube who refinishes them. It's unbelievable. It's, it's he, from, from, he shows, he takes it all apart. He, he strips it all down. He, he, he sandblasts it if he has to. He fix any damage in the car. And it, he, re, he puts the car back together again at the end. And his little matchbook cars look like they're brand new again. And people send him cars to do, right? It's awesome. If you ever get a chance, look up like matchbook restoration. Matchbook or dinky car restoration on, on YouTube. Uh, and there's another guy who takes old tools, like old Zippo lighters and old like, you know, axes, uh, you know, shovels, pickaxes old equipment like from the turn of the century from 1920s and he'll he'll make them look like brand new again i i love watching that stuff i i love that too man i really do love that jim you're very welcome and i'm happy to help you just give me another month or so please sorry got my nose is all stuffed up guys i don't know what's going on maybe i'm allergic to something um uh call it i've slabbed books for preservation i have a bunch of uncanny x-men slabbed with pgx and i have no illusion of selling them uh, only to preserve them. That's fine. And I, I know guys that use PGX exclusively because A, they're cheaper. B, uh, they, they're, they're, they're faster. And, and they don't give a rat's ass about CGC. They just want to have their book encapsulated so it's protected. And that's all. And to be honest, PGX's slabs are not bad. And their new labels are, I like them better than CBCS. Um, so, you know, there it is. If you're, if you're planning on, but when the day comes though, Craig, when the day comes for you or your family to sell those books and they're not in a CGC slab, expect to lose 15 to 20%. If it's, if it's, if it's, if it's in a PGX slab, even more. 
right? So that's that's the only thing, right? You got to consider. That's the only thing you got to consider. Because one day, one day, those books will be sold. Let's be honest. And I'm the same. I've got my books here. As much as I want my kids to inherit my books and to treasure them and keep them forever and ever, the truth of the matter is they're probably going to sell my books or I'll probably sell them before I leave this uh, this plane of existence, right? So it is what it is. Uh, Nathan, hey, now I've got some books that have been in my collection for 30 years that I'd like to slab for preservation. No plans to ever sell them. And the same thing I just said to Colin, Nathan, I agree. I don't want to sell mine either, but one day, one day, they will go into the hands of another collector, I'm sure. Uh, Prince Zodiac, I'm one of the outliers. I want most of my books done for preservation. Also, when my kids end up with them, they'll get a fair price if they decide not to keep them. And that, that's exactly my point. That's exactly my point. Um, I want them not to get ripped off. I want them to be able to go on eBay or onto, onto Heritage Auction Sales and see, oh, oh, it's an uh, Amazing Fantasy 15 and a 1.8. Oh, its current value is uh, $3,000. Never know. <laughs> okay, I, I, I could expect to get at least close to that, right? But if the book's not graded, if the book's graded with a different company, then who knows, right? Uh, Sam, have you ever come across original art when looking at collections? N only once recently, and I'm hoping... Uh, to pick up some because I don't have any original art. I'd love to have some. Um, it's hard to to price that stuff though. I mean, of course, if you got Jack Kirby or John Byrne or you know Tom McFarlane original art or whatever, big money. But some stuff isn't big money, and so you have to know your stuff. And I, I luckily I have I know a couple of dudes uh, locally that are into the original art, and so I I whenever I if I ever see something, I contact them and they give me advice because I I am not an expert about uh, with original art at all. But there's one that I'm looking at right now, and has it's it's a splash page I think from from Hulk Annual number ten I think, and it's got the Hulk you know it's an awesome splash page. I just want it to put on my wall, man. So we'll see if I get lucky and pick that up. Uh, I don't understand sending books through FedEx or UPS. They only allow you up to hundred insurance. Actually, I heard they will. I'll tell you something. I was just told by a fellow, a customer who I'm sending, I just sent a box of very expensive Pokemon cards down to Heritage for auction. And he came to me because my, 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 my insurance rate is compared to, I think he said it was UPS. UPS would give him insurance $100 per $1,000 of insurance. All right. So basically 10%, right? So he, the Pokemon cards, I think, was about $35,000. So it would have cost him, uh, do the math, right, to, to, to insure that package. So he came to me. I contacted my broker because I deal with comic books, not cards, right? Cards. So I called my broker and I said, listen, this is what's the situation. Can I send these books down on his behalf? He said, yes, as long as they give me some stipulations. I followed those stipulations. Off the books went. But I believe FedEx and UPS will give you high, high insurance, but... Uh, you're going to pay $100 per 1,000 value. Also, keep in mind when you do this, okay, this, this, is, the, this is what sucks. All right, this is what really sucks. Um, who's asked this question again? Um, this is Davey. Now, this is what sucks about this, Davey. If you've got a parcel, uh, we've been for an hour and 50. I'm going to end this, this pretty soon, guys. But anyways, to answer Davey's question, when you send down a parcel to CGC and say you're sending down a $10,000 comic book, okay, it's going to cost you $1,000 to insure it for uh, $10,000, okay? When you do that, you have to indicate in the customs forms the value of the book as $10,000. Once you do that, your package is going to be red flag at the border and CGC is probably going to get charged some kind of customs clearance fees based on that $10,000 and then they're going to, and then they're going to, uh, um, in turn, CGC will then bill you for that. Now I'm assuming Davey, you're in Canada. That's right. I'm assuming you're in Canada and that's what really sucks. Understand something. When CGC sends books back to their clients, they, they give a value of each book of $5. The book could be this book, it could be an AF-15, it could be an ASM-1, it could be an X-Men number one or a giant size X-Men one. It could be a 9698. CGC will say the book is worth $5. That's it. And the reason they do that, especially when it's coming back to Canada, is because they know if they don't do that, they're, 
the the the, the customs is going to stop that shipment and they're going to charge the receiver huge customs clearance fees and that and that's what sucks now the way i circumvent that is i have a third party insurance bro uh, company i have a third i pay for third party insurance right so i pay for this so that means that you know I put on my parcels, the box, books are worth five bucks a book, two bucks a book, three bucks. I don't ever, if I'm sending a 10,000, like that parcel I sent today for 35,000, I didn't tell customs it was 35,000. I told customs it was 150 bucks. Because if I didn't do that, they're going to stop the parcel. They're going to, it's ridiculous. But that being said, I sent my insurance company a manifest of what was in that box. So they knew what, what, what I was sending. You understand? So I, I can circumvent all the baloney at the border. It's really a pain in the ass. And that's why a lot of guys come to guys like me to ship their books for them. They don't have to deal with that baloney. Um, and when the books are coming back, by the way, if just for regular people or just regular, if you're sending your own books to CGC, most of the time, the books will come back, no customs clearance fees. But sometimes you'll get dinged. I have a box, uh, two boxes from Canada Post that a fellow in the state sent me two weeks ago. The first box came and he put down the box that it was worth $6,000. And what happened? Canada Post flagged it, and I got charged, well, he got charged, $350 customs clearance fees. Now, I've put an appeal, right, saying these books were not sold, these books are going back to the owner when I'm done my conservation service. So I'm waiting for that $330 or $340 refund. It could take up to six months to get that back. The, but the funny thing is, he sent another box with the exact same amount on it, and it went right through, they didn't charge him anything. So, I mean, it's hit and miss, right? It's, it's really strange. Um, <laughs> uh, some funny lines here. Uh, Rob, I hope that answered your question, uh, Davey. Rob Ben, CBC just does raw grading with a tamper-proof seal. They do. And that's what I was thinking of doing, too. Like, charge 15 bucks and grade it. Or whatever, 20 bucks. I don't know. Uh, you never know. I might, I might do that eventually, too. You know? But again... People then, well, who is he? Who's who's this comic doctor guy to, to grade books? You know, who? What does he know? And then you get that whole, that whole thing, you know, um, about qualifications and and that sort of thing. And and I, I'm kind of I'm on the fence. It's it's just, yeah, like I need more work, right, guys? It's something that I would possibly do if things settled down. If I want to try something new, I might. Uh, Prince Zodiac, CB says, does raw grading surprise? CGC doesn't have that. Uh, we just said that. Good. Uh, oh my God, Colin Smith. I'm getting uh, buried with my uncanny. <laughs> oh, you could. Jim Bruce, when I die, I'll bury my comic. <laughs> you said, right? You, said, you guys have a lot. You guys think very much alike, right? Stacy CD. Hi, Kevin. First time watching live. If CGC is now grading cards, do you think it will slow down uh, return time? Sorry if it was already asked. Join the party. Hey, Stacy, how you doing? Thanks. Uh, please consider subscribing to the channel as well if you don't mind. Uh, glad you're here. Um, I think they have a different uh, grouping of people working on the cards. Uh, I believe I don't think it's the same. You know, the guys who grade the cards aren't grading the comic books. I, I don't believe. Now, I don't work at CGC. I have not ever been to CGC. Uh, I plan on having a CGC rep on the show one day to ask questions with you guys and myself. Uh, that's coming up and things I want to do in the new year. Um, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I think they're just being hammered really hard because, uh, of the popularity of comics over the last year. Like I said, for me, unprecedented submissions for me, uh, February, March, and April. That's, that's what caused my, my backlog. That's what actually caused my backlog. Up until that point, I wasn't like, I wasn't like three, four months. I was like maybe a month behind. And then it got I just got so many submissions at that time. So many submissions uh, because everyone's at home, I think. You know, COVID, you're all at home. People are rediscovering their collections, you know, looking online. What's this collection? What's what's comic book collecting like nowadays? They find, oh, what's the CGC thing? What's this? What's pressing and cleaning? And then all of a sudden, you know, I got busy. And I think that's what happened to CGC too. They're just inundated with, and then of course the auction prices are going crazy. Everyone thinks they've got a small fortune in their house, right? And their comic books. So everyone's sending everything. And I'll tell you, and I've talked about this before, I'm getting all kinds of books submitted to me, not just, uh, not just, uh, you know, high end books. I'm getting all kinds of books, books I wouldn't even consider sometimes doing if they were mine, but people want them done. So what am I supposed to do? Right? Uh, so CGC is getting all kinds of books submitted as well. Yeah. So there you go. Hope that answered your question. Thanks. And Stacy, glad you're here. Stavros, Kevin, adopt me. Ah, Stavros, you're too old. 
Uh, put me in your will. Cannot sell for 100 years after death. That could do that. Pappy, secretly Kev is using pressing... Okay, secretly Kev is using pressing the book? Pappy, I'm not sure what you mean. Is using pressing the book. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Pappy. You mean I'm, I'm reading something or using something? Nicholas Parker, maybe you have a water allergy. <laughs> I get <that. laughs> Nicholas, I better be going to Diet Coke. I think you're right. Maybe I'm detoxing. Maybe that's the problem. Um, original comic art always looks nice. Next, the book came from my daughter. Used mine during a Zoom show uh, and tell oh, at her school last year. That's awesome. Uh, I'll tell you, I went to buy a collection once in um, in Quebec, and the guy had like a hundred pieces of original art, and I don't know what was in there. But he wanted to get. He wanted to unload it. I could have picked it up for nothing. And I passed on it. I didn't want. I don't want that. I'm in a comic book. I don't want the art. Duh, duh. You know. But again, I'm not sure what was in there. A lot of flash stuff. I remember. Um, Jim, my kids would have my comic sold the day after I die. <laughs> I should put a 20 year do not sell on my will. <laughs> Who knows, Stav? Kevin, you saw my post on UPS about their clearance fees. Yeah, uh, UPS is the worst. I think they're they are they are the absolute worst. But Stav, like a, you can actually negotiate with with them, believe it or not. If you're pissed off and you don't agree with it, you can call and complain, and you can just talk them down usually. But a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people just take it. Like, oh, you know, I can't, I, I can't do anything about that. I'll just pay the bill. You know, screw that. Like, I paid that bill for that guy and the Canada Post bill, a $350 bill. I, I called him up when I was at the post office. I told him what was going. He goes, Kevin, it was my fault. Just pay it, and I'll pay you. I'm like, okay. I'll do that. So I paid, but I said to him, I go, we're not ending here, by the way. You're not paying that and paying it. Like, I mean, I'm going to try to get your money back for you. It's a pain in my butt a little bit. I had to write a letter and send it off by snail mail. I couldn't even send an email. I had to send it like the actual forms and signs and all that. It's a customs, right, to, to Revenue Canada. So I did that. Hopefully he'll get his money back. I think he will. I got money back before, but it took like six to eight months to get the money back, I remember. Um, Jamie. Hey, Jamie, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you. A damn late again. I'll have to watch later. Out to beer, out to beer and chicken wing night. Have a good evening, everybody. You too, Jamie. He's probably gone by now. They have a different division that grades cards called CSG, and that's from the Real Hyperion. That's from James. Yes, I think you are right. So again, to go back and answer Stacy's question, I don't think really the 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 uh, cards have any bearing on that at all. Hey, Kev, can you give my kid? Uh, Navia, a shout out because she, uh, she has patiently watched the whole video. How old is your kid, uh, Nevia? And hello, Nevia. I hope I'm saying that right, Nevia. Hi, welcome to the show. Thanks for watching. It was very nice of you to watch along with your dad. How you doing? Uh, Stav, I did pay 25 versus 75. Exactly. Because you asked, because you complained. But some guys don't complain. They'll just, they'll, just, they'll just kind of roll over and take it. Nah, baloney. If you don't think it's right, it's not right. What makes me mad about that stuff, when books are coming back from CG, so they're your books. Why should you pay taxes on your own books? That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. So hopefully that's not the case. Um, I'm in it. I'm in if you come across more art. Yeah, I'll let you know, Sam. I, I, I'm really, really into it too. I know it's it's, it's gaining popularity. Um, but it's hard to come back. Oh, she's, she's 11. Well, thank you so much, honey, for watching. I'm going to end right now because I'm losing my voice and I have to get back to work and I'm actually, I have to take the dogs for a walk. That's what I've got to do. But guys, oh, a couple of ones came in here. Okay. Don't know where you get your energy from, Kevin, but it's your secret weapon. Kev, can't wait till you get to my three books submitted November 6th. We'll keep watching in the meantime. Mason, yes, please do so. Um, I will more than happily, uh, you know, show them here on what's in the press when the time comes. Jim, no, my pleasure, Jim. And kids love hearing their name on... Who does it? Everyone loves to hear their name on YouTube, right? Even you guys, I'm sure, like to... Hey, why do you think I do this? What's in the press? Everyone loves it. Everyone... Guys, when I was in great, when I was in kindergarten, my favorite thing was show and tell. I love show and tell. Bring in your stuff and showing everybody. And I'm sure you all love to see your books showcased here on What's in the Press. And even when they come back from CGC, it's a lot of fun. We all like that, right? You're very welcome. Hey, James, how you doing, buddy? Glad you could make it. Glad you could make it. All right, guys. Well, listen, thanks again for popping by today. Uh, it's a long show. I'm gonna get, I haven't been here for a while. I might do another video later in the week. We'll see. But again, if you have not done so already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, like the video, too, if you wouldn't mind. And uh, remember, 
uh, I'll be in the shop this Saturday from 11 till 1 p.m. If you want to pop by, I have a lot of books for sale, and I'm going to start tearing down the shop probably soon after because I have to get the presses back in there sooner rather than later. So I want to get rid of some stuff. So if you want to make, get some good deals, come on to the shop this Saturday if you are local. And that is it for me, my friends. You take care of a fantastic night, and I'll probably see you again later in the week. Until then, bye for now.